I had no idea we can actually simulate antennas in MATLAB. You're not the only one. Lots of people don't know that you can do electromagnetic analysis with MATLAB. It's a fairly new capability. What they need to add or where they, Antenna where, toolbox. where they can start this. Where can they start? Good, 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 good. Um, so they install MATLAB, they install Antenna Toolbox. And uh, the place where I always recommend to start is uh, from the apps. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to open up this, um, uh, this, this panel here, and you can see that I have all the products for MathWorks. And if you browse down, you see here in the um, area of signal processing and communication, you have the uh, the antenna designer app, uh, the array designer app, uh, you have the matching network designer app, uh, the PCB designer app talking about antennas. So you have lots and lots of different features. I put a star here, so they are pinned at the top of my tool strip. So the place where I would like to start is always from the antenna designer app. Mm -hmm. it's, um, um, uh, it's an app. So it's interactive, it's point and click. Uh, of course, it opens up on my other screen. So bear with me for a second, I put it here. How does it work here? You essentially you start with a new session. In this case, we open up a new session and uh, you have uh, available a catalog of antennas that are sort of predefined. Uh, so you see you have uh, horn antennas, uh, you have cone antennas, type of dipoles, sorry. Uh, you have um, different uh, monopole, uh, patch antennas, even dielectric resonator antennas, spirals, all sorts of different options. Um, and we are going to use PCB antenna. Is there like special container for PCB antenna? Or? Um, we will use the PCB antennas, but later, not from the catalog, because the PCB antenna um, is not predefined in geometry. Mm -hmm. It's a custom antenna. Mm -hmm. So I will show you how to start with a, a predefined shape mm -hmm. and then modify the shape to create your own PCB antenna. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you know, we, we took inspiration from um, uh, 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 this specific antenna from... Um, uh, uh, from the eye, from this application node. So we will start with a very simple inverted F antenna, coplanar inverted F antenna, and then uh, we will first design it in free space. Then we will put it on a dielectric substrate, and then we will meander the radiator to uh, shrink the uh, electrical dimension of the antenna, and as well, um, uh, essentially make it more compact, essentially increase the, the, uh, the electrical length of the antenna. Mm -hmm. So if uh, someone needs to use an antenna for their designs, then these are exactly the steps what uh, they would be doing to be yeah. sure the antenna on their PC is going to work properly. And they can also check the all the fields and parameters of the antenna during these right. simulations. So what will right. be the result? Um, let's After see. we finish this, what, what we can oh, get? The, what will be the results? Um, so in this case, for example, let me just pull it up. Uh, this is our meander antenna, mm -hmm. inverted F uh, meander antenna. And for example, what we can get is the pattern of the antenna at the resonant frequency, the S parameters, the impedance, um, different with the um, uh, charge distribution, for example, the current distribution. So all these properties can be uh, sim uh, analyzed using electromagnetic analysis on your specific antenna. Mm -hmm. Do As you well, have also like, this is just maybe a side question, do you have also like 3D viewer of the field or can you uh, rotate this? Yeah, oh. yeah, absolutely. Uh, there you go. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Also, PCB is rotating together. This is really, yeah. this is really nice because very often I see this field and I have no idea how it is related to the PCB. And right. this is really cool. Right. And uh, you can also, you can, you have different type of options. You can also overlay your antenna on top of the pattern. You see it here. So essentially this is when it's quite small because we shrank it with the dielectric, but you can essentially play around with different options essentially to show the PCB and the pattern. Mm -hmm. You can also cut the pattern through different um, uh, azimuthal or elevation uh, cuts essentially mm -hmm. and look at the metrics. Actually, but, the, show... but the PCB yeah. would be like in the exact center because it was like pointing out from the field or, or that's how right. it would really look. 
why is that? Because um, uh, the feed point of this antenna is actually on this leg here, if you see there, mm -hmm. where my mouse is yes, pointing. So with that respect, the radiation happens along the radiating arm. So it's not oh. exactly in the center. And we can also, I think, see the whole well, graph. So. The whole graph, uh, we can see the S parameters. Yeah, S parameters, yeah, that's what I mean. We can look at the, uh, at the S parameters or the impedance. So let, I, I haven't, don't have the figure here, but we can regenerate it. Um, I can uh, just look here at the S parameters, for example. So let me just, uh, I click now F9. I just selected my lines of code and I click F9 and then this one will execute. In the background, what we see is, um, I have the image here, uh, 11 frequency points over which we computed the S parameters. So the electromagnetic analysis is running on the fly and is computing, is solving the structure, is meshing the structure. Uh, so it applies um, a planar mesh on the metal and the volumetric mesh on the, on the dielectric. I think maybe essential. we should explain what does it mean as parameters. I, I created a video about this, but uh, some people, they may not really know what as parameters mean and how they can be useful. Basically, uh, this means that uh, in this 2.55, uh, all mm -hmm. the energy goes out. Basically, exactly. that's what is happening. That's why the uh, it's why the graph goes so low. Um, so S parameters is, um, is, S stands for scattering parameters, and it's uh, uh, essentially a fancy way to look at the impedance of the antenna. Let's call it like that. Let, let's, let's try, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna put it in here, and instead of calling S parameters, I'm gonna type in impedance. And it's gonna be super fast, because essentially we already analyzed the structure. And what do we see? We see two traces, the reactance and the resistance. So the reactance is the imaginary part of the impedance. The resistance is the um, real part of the impedance. And what you see here is that at 255 gigahertz, our reactance is, uh, crosses zero. Mm -hmm. um, zero reactance means essentially that the structure is resonant, which is great because an antenna is a piece of metal that when it's resonant, it radiates energy. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at the impedance, we did a oh, really fantastic yeah. job straight on 50 ohm, no needs for impedance, uh, um, impedance or matching network. This antenna is, uh, is well done. Uh, actually, kudos to TI that did a good design. Now Let the me... question is, okay, I would like to design my own PCB antenna. Mm -hmm. How can I do it here? Right. So I'm going to... First of all, I'm going to clear my workspace. So I'm going to remove all my variables and close all my figures so that you can trust me that I'm, I don't have, uh, I can say, ACs in my sleeves or things like that. So let's uh, clean up everything. And then I'm going to go to my um, app, the one that we were launching before, the uh, Antenna Designer app. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question because I... Mm -hmm. I used to work in MATLAB like maybe 20 years ago, so I have no idea what we, what do we have here in this uh, window, not in this one, the other one. Uh, the, this is the main MATLAB um, uh, environment. Okay. When you launch MATLAB, this is what you find. On the left hand side, we have the current folder. So I'm now in this particular folder mm -hmm. and these are all the files that are listed here. Um, this is the command window. So mm -hmm. here is where you type in your MATLAB commands. Um, this is the workspace. This is where your variables are defined. Mm -hmm. And this is the editor, essentially. Actually, I'm going to close it. Uh, because we are going to create a new one. That's what we are because, going to create. Exactly. We are, okay. Exactly. That was the end result. This is our, uh, our how can I say, uh, the script or the programs that creates the antenna. So actually what we will see is to design an antenna and then generate and create a script mm -hmm. that you can uh, um, re-execute over and over again, again and, and modify it uh, so that you can automate a lot of the steps uh, for the design of the antenna. Okay, okay. so now we, we can go back to the app. Let's go to the app. Okay. So the, uh, we talked briefly about the catalog. So we have uh, all our antennas, but let's say that you know nothing and you want to say, give me an antenna that has a nominal directional pattern. 
uh, so that radiates energy everywhere in space that is not directional. So you can imagine already intuitively that a horn antenna will be directional, a dipole will be omnidirectional. And in fact, if I open here all the horn, the aperture antennas of the horn antennas are, are, are grayed out, so you cannot select them because they are not omnidirectional. And if you browse down, you find other antennas that are omnidirectional. So the inverted F antenna is omnidirectional because if you remember the radiation pattern had the shape of a sort of a donut. So it, it, it sends uh, the power all around. Um, so I'm going to select my inverted antenna. And now um, the first question is, um, of course, um, uh, what could be, what should be uh, the geometric properties of this antenna? So how long and large each piece is of, uh, of, uh, of this antenna should be uh, to make the antenna resonant at a specific frequency. Mm -hmm. So in our case, we are working at 2.4 gigahertz. So I just mm -hmm. type here uh, 2,400 megahertz. And uh, when I click on accept, the geometry of this antenna gets automatically scaled to be resonant at the given frequency. Wow, nice. This, I love this feature because honestly, I don't remember all the rules of thumb that makes the antenna resonant. And by the way, this is not, no electromagnetic analysis is done at this point in time. This is really um, gathering all the knowledge of the antenna designers over the years to give you this um, uh, rapid calculation to make the antenna resonant. Mm -hmm. So let's verify this. So I'm going to uh, plot uh, the impedance of this antenna in uh, over this frequency range. Mm -hmm. This is very fast. The antenna is uh, a perfect electrical conductor. I know it because you see it here uh, that the metal is PEC. So essentially it doesn't have any, any, any losses, any ohmic losses. Um, uh, and um, so it's, it's in free space, it's a pure piece of metal in free space. And we can see that indeed the reactance is zero, mm -hmm. 2.4, uh, and the resistance is not bad. It's something we can verify. I think it's around 70 ohm or something like that. 67 ohm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, so the antenna is resonant. We can verify again the S parameters. We can see what is the bandwidth. In general, the bandwidth of, um, of, um, of an inverted F. I believe is around 7%, but in this case we can count it. So you can see here, this is 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, 150 megahertz. I'm looking at the, where um, the S11 crosses minus 10 dB, which means that is essentially well matched. Mm -hmm. So if I, and now I'll show you the, my favorite usage of MATLAB. So if I do 150 div, uh, megahertz, let's say divided by 2.4 gigahertz, this gives me 6% of bandwidth, approximately ballpark, which is pretty much what I was expecting or what the literature gives you. Um, okay, let's go back to our things. Other things that we can look at is, for example, the current distribution. So the surface property of the antenna were most of the, uh, essentially, the, uh, which, is, which is not surprising because the, the inverted F antenna, you can actually see it as um, a, a quarter wave monopole bent over. Um, so this is where the excitation comes over, but essentially this is a quarter wave monopole. Um, and this is the ground plane over which the quarter excitation comes. Quarter wave monopole, so what does it mean? A quarter wave monopole is essentially, um, it, 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 it's a, it, so when you have a dipole, essentially you have half wave, you can take a half of, um, of the length of the dipole and put it on the ground plane and you get a monopole essentially because the ground plane reflects the energy of the oh, yeah, top okay. part. And this does the same only that is planar instead of being sticking up. That's okay, so it means on the left there is basically some kind of like uh, zero or, or the lowest current and Correct. on In the, the right middle, that's the maximum. Correct. Correct. And this extra leg that you see here, this is actually a short to the ground plane. And this uh, uh, is useful to improve the impedance matching mm -hmm. of our uh, quarter wave monopole. And that's one way at least in which I thought it, you can intuitively look at an inverted F antenna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else can we do? We can also look at the 3D pattern. Um, and we will see our donut. So here the gain is a 3.9 dBi. Actually, we're not looking at the gain, we're looking at the directivity. 
because there are no losses, because it's perfect electrical conductor, no, uh, no dielectrics, so it's good. All the energy that we give gets radiated, uh, the one that doesn't get reflected, of course. And then uh, what else? And then we can look, for example, at the... Rotate it. I, I'm curious. Rotate it. Yeah, yeah. Let's rotate it. Because this looks a little bit different from what we've seen in the right, beginning. Right, right. There is this what bump. We saw at the beginning, right. There is a little bit of a bump. Uh, it's, it's actually smaller in power than uh, than um, than our big donut. Let's put, uh, let's, uh, let's say it, but we will see how this big bump changes when you start um, uh, putting the antenna on a dielectric mm -hmm. as well as adding the meander. So effectively you are changing the mm -hmm. design of the antenna. So the real F antenna like this one will have also this bump uh, directing like uh, ahead of the PCB? Um, no, no, it gets smaller actually. Okay. There is the there is still the bump, but it's a little bit smaller. So this is caused only because this is all like uh, perfect antenna. That's right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, we can actually look at the uh, a different cuts of the pattern as well. I find it quite cool. Um, so for example, we can look at the azimuth uh, cut. And then yeah. we can. Uh, but here is no PCB, see, and I, I have no idea now what directions we are looking at. Right, right, right. But we can still do something cool. We can still look at the antenna metrics. Uh, so, for example, we can look at where is the main lobe, what is the uh, the front to back uh, front to back um, uh, ratio, the side lobe level, the, the the beam width, and so forth. So it's it's. It's 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 cool. I, I always go back to this one because this one gives me what is azimuth zero and elevation zero as a reference point, and then I go back here and then I say, oh yeah, ah, okay. I see where I am. Okay, I in the in the in the plot. But these are the type of things that uh, that you can do. Um, let me just do one thing, and I, I want to simplify a little bit what we are seeing. I just want to put four plots now on our. Um, uh, on our um, on our screen, mm -hmm. let me make it a little bit bigger. And then what I uh, always like here, um, and I think what um, tell, tell me you can you can adjust the numbers and you will see all the changes there. Exactly, <laughs> sensitivity analysis. That's that's essentially uh, what any engineer would do is uh, go there and say, if I change a little bit this number, what happens? Okay, let's see. Is my, is my design going uh, crazy or is it still doable? Um, so all of these here are the geometric properties. So you see it's a catalog, it's an antenna from the catalog because the, the shape is de predefined, uh, but all the geometric properties can be tuned. So let's say that um, I want to increase uh, the width of um, the radiator arm and the feeder arm. And you might ask me, what are these things? How do I know w w what properties these are related to? Well, of course you can change it, you can try it. And if you have good eyes, you will see the uh -huh. difference that this one has gone thicker and this one has gone thicker. Uh, but of course, um, uh, we also have, um, uh, of course, the documentation. So I can pull up the MATLAB documentation. Uh, I'm gonna uh, head it here. And for example, I can go to the antenna catalog. These are all our antennas. And uh, for example, let me look for patch antenna. This is all our catalog and I'm gonna have, um, oh, we're not, where are my inverted F antennas? I don't see them. So what do I do? I go here and I say inverted F. That's probably the easier way to use the MATLAB documentation, always search. And then here, oh, this is an inverted F, it's not a coplanar inverted F. So let's go for coplanar inverted F, Coplan okay, that's it. Inverted F coplanar, I don't remember exactly how it is called, uh, but here you can see that there are all the geometric properties. Mm -hmm. So this one tells me that uh, this is the height of the inverted F. Um, this one is um, uh, the length uh, to the open. Uh, 
Yeah, I can see it. Here. I can see all and of the, the length yeah. of the short, and then you have all the width and the ground plane size. Mm -hmm. So you have all the properties and uh, uh, I can say uh, a mapping between uh, the naming of the properties to the uh, geometric properties of the, of the actual antenna. So what happened here when I uh, increased the, the thickness of our uh, radiator and feeder arm, I increased it by 50%, I just applied the 1.5 factor. So you see that essentially the resonance point moved a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. Let's move it a little bit more. Let's put a 2%, uh, let's increase it by 100%. Let's see what happens. As soon as I say, okay, you will see the resonance moving to lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we are increasing the uh, capacitive coupling between the radiator and the ground plane. Um, but this is also, I can do the other way around. I, I can make it thinner and see if uh, uh, the resonance frequency moves up as I would expect. And we can try around, you see that uh, this gives you a good uh, indication of what what matters essentially. Okay, so we know um, about the radiator arm and the feeder arm that essentially that's what feeds our resonance. Uh, the short, another question. Yep. Uh, can you tweak it some kind of automatically? Or? Uh, yes, uh, we will see it a little bit later. Okay. So in, uh, you, you can see here that we have an optimized mm -hmm. tab. So in the optimization tab, I will talk a little bit later about this. You can give uh, um, uh, bounds to your variables and say between, I don't know, 0 0.1 and 10 or whatever you like. And then there is an optimization algorithm that will uh, um, optimize a, speci a specific objective function. Okay. And okay, the objective indeed. function could be the gain or the impedance or, uh, or different properties. So, so my next question would be like, we have this uh, theoretical antenna, but we still have not included uh, PCB, for example, because there will be influence from the PCB material. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Uh, I tell you what's my favorite way of doing it. Um, you could, for certain antennas that um, uh, are in the catalog, you could uh, put a reflector and then add uh, a dielectric in between the reflector and your catalog and your antenna, essentially. But in this case, uh, we don't have a reflector. So what I do, uh, what I would recommend is to export this antenna design as a script. Mm -hmm. Now that I have a script, um, I can uh, essentially modify uh, everything in my antenna, what, step by step. So let me just do this. So I'm gonna remove this one and put it here at the bottom because it's gonna be helpful later on. Um, so here you see, what do I do? I Let me remove a little bit of the comments that are helpful, but I just want to have the code a little bit more compact here. Okay, so uh, this code was now automatically generated from what we Correct. from Correct. the design what we have just created. Yep. Okay, and exactly. this is the antenna described. Yep. So I'm gonna say, for example, I like to have it parameterized. So I say F zero is my center frequency. I say two point four e nine. Uh, in that way, it becomes uh, parameterized. So if I want to redesign my antenna mm -hmm. at a different frequency, I can redesign. Design is the same function that we actually invoked at the beginning when we scale the antenna. So if I execute this piece of code, what I will get is my antenna with the default properties to be resonant. Mm -hmm. at, um, uh, let's put it here on the side so that we don't, we don't lose it anymore. Um, let's simplify things here as well. So the antenna analysis is, is, is curious how you generate the code and then I end up uh, um, um, removing half of it. So I want a lean space, uh, I want a, between 2.2 gigahertz maybe and 2.6 gigahertz. So this will speed uh, up the simulation? This one is, is, is the range, not necessarily, this is the, the, the range of frequencies over which I want to uh, analyze my antenna. So if I want to have more points then the analysis will be slower. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it, this will speed up the simulations a little bit because if, we if, are only looking uh, at the place what we need. Exactly. So here we look at the impedance. Here we look at the S parameters. The reference impedance is always 50 ohms, so mm -hmm. I can remove it. And then 
and let me do this. And what I get here on my other screen is actually a bunch of figures. So let me dock it. So I get the impedance, 2.4 gigahertz resonant DS parameters, a good match at 50 ohm. And then we also get, oh, this one I made a mistake, F0. Oh, I have a question again. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so you run this uh, kind of command like design inverted F coplanar, mm -hmm. and then figure will draw the picture. Figure will open a new figure, and then uh -huh, and show antenna object. That's what draws the picture. Exactly. Okay, I understand. And if you wonder what can you do with an antenna object, um, what can you do? In general, I say what are the methods that I can apply to my antenna object. Mm -hmm. And then it tells me all the things that I can compute. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have S parameters, uh, we have pattern. These are, are the ones that we just used. We have impedance. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also look at current. Um, we can look at the efficiency of the antenna at the E and H field. So if you want to look at the near field, um, or if you have antennas that are coupled, uh, Actually, you can look at the mesh of the antenna if it gets analyzed. You can look at how much memory, more or less, it will take to analyze. This is a very simple antenna. You see how quick it is. And by the way, my computer is five years old. So it's really end of life. It's not a supercomputer, just to be very, very honest. Um, so these are the type of things that you can do with the antenna uh, object. And you can, all the elements of the catalog support this method, and then you can uh, essentially visualize it or compute the different properties mm -hmm. here. So, and, and again, I see, uh, then uh, then you have like uh, frequency range, line space, figure, impedance. Why you don't have their show line again? Uh, because impedance, if I just execute impedance, it will, uh, draw, impedance, the... it will draw impedance in the last figure okay. that you okay. have open. There mm -hmm. you go. Okay, I understand now. And then, um, yeah, so... So whenever I type in figure, I say, give me a new figure. And then I get a new figure here. Yeah, figure, it's named, the tab is named figure. So that's basically the mm -hmm. empty. C correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. And, um, but I haven't answered yet your question. That is, uh, I, I just repeated everything that we did from the app, from the command line, but we haven't put this in a PCB, PCB. have mm -hmm. we? Okay. So let's put it on a PCB. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object that is called PCB Ant. This is my name. We can, we can give it a, for Robert or whatever, whatever name you prefer. And I'm going to say PCB Stack. And uh, I'm going to pass in here my antenna object. And um, I'm going to do again the show PCB Ant. Okay. Um, so let's execute these two codes, these, uh, these two lines. And what do we see? Um, nothing has changed again. So if I look at, um, uh, what is it? Sorry, I browsed in the wrong direction. If I look at my figure here, PCB ant, it looks the same as it was before. But if I look at the object, the object you see it, it's here, it's printed here, the PCB ant object is a different object, is a PCB stock. So I sort of loaded my geometry on a PCB stack, mm -hmm. and this geometry got um, imported as the single layer. So mm -hmm. it's a single PCB layer, and this layer one is our antenna polygon. Mm -hmm. So it's a polygon that has all these uh, properties here. Um, the name, it inherits the name from the antenna type. Uh, it has a certain board shape that is a rectangle that includes, a, um, that has a boundary that is larger than our antenna. It doesn't have vias. It, it has a feed. V, it, it has a feed on the feed of the, our uh, inverted F antenna where it was. It has um, no dielectrics essentially because it only has one layer, and uh, the conductor is um, uh, is PEC. So if I do PCB and uh, dot, uh, and, and this is very helpful with MATLAB, you can always use um, a tab completion. So you can uh, go to the elements. 
So it tells me that the conductor is PEC. So we can mm -hmm. change it, for example, to copper or mm -hmm. something else. We will do it in a second, actually. But first, let's put the, the antenna on top of the dielectric. Okay. Let's do it right away. Yeah, okay. So what I'm, unless you have a question. No, no, um, th this was exactly my question. Like, uh, I would like to um, correctly arrange the ground and, and, and the antenna in the PCB. Right, 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 right. So I'm going to say D1 is going to be a dielectric. Mm -hmm. Again, top completion, MATLAB reads your mind sometimes. Sometimes it reads a little bit, my, my mind a little bit too much. Uh, we have different options. I'm going to choose dielectric FR4. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, let me execute D1. So D1 is a dielectric, FR4, with a certain epsilon R, mm -hmm. is a certain loss tangent, and a certain thickness. And uh, by the way, we have a catalog of dielectrics. We do like catalogs. And um, you can see that these are all the dielectric materials that are supported out of the box. Mm -hmm. So this is the name. It's uh, air, of course, is the default, but you have FR4s, you have different Rogers material. And if you want to define your own dielectric, you just have to specify what is the relative permittivity and the loss tangent. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Um, you can always rewrite the, uh, uh, the values. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, so let's say that uh, I want uh, D1 dot. Uh, uh, epsilon r to be 4.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cross Maybe trip. we can have a look into the Texas instrument document. Um, we need to, ideally, we would like to find the stack up what they use for the reference board. R right, right, right. So here there is the, uh, the reference design here. Uh, if you browse down, so there is a zip file. There you go. No, not this one, the other one, I think. Uh, this one, sorry, yeah. the rev, uh, rev C, I think. And this is a zip file that if we open it up, then we find this text, text, file. This text yeah. description with the thickness of the PCB. So it's uh, the layers are either 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 millimeter. OK. And the copper is 35 micrometers. OK, so let's use this uh, number. So we need to use uh, 0 0.25 millimeter uh, thickness of the dielectricum. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, 35 micrometers for the for the copper. And, and so they have it like four layer PCB? Uh, I think that the PCB is a little bit more complicated than just the antenna in the sense that they have other stuff put on that. You can actually see it. So maybe it's the... uh, plus uh, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25. I think that that's the bottom layer for the um, uh, for the dielectric that you put uh, below the ground plane. Oh, OK. So the ground plane is on layer two. That's why we would like to use 0 0.25. Correct. OK. But let's go, let's go back to our antenna. So let's say that we put this one is all on top it's all on top so we can just sum them all so 0 0.25 0 0.5 okay. 0 0.25 so we can have uh, one millimeter of thickness for our dielectric okay to start with uh, and then uh, we want to say that pcb and dot uh, layers Okay, I understand. Uh, so we put that the thickness of the whole PCB, but we put the second layer 0 0.25 millimeter. Correct, okay. correct. So we have just one single slab of dielectric right now that represents all the dielectric layers, mm -hmm. because okay. now, now, right now we were putting our antenna on top of it. Okay. And um, let's see what happens here. When I say do this, I execute it. This tells me a couple of things. The dielectric thickness is updated with the board thickness. So this is not good. I need to change the board thickness mm -hmm. of our PCB stack. So let me do, just go here. I say PCB and uh, dot uh, uh, board uh, thickness. Mm -hmm. We're going to set it to the same, 1E e mm -hmm. minus 3. Okay. In that way, we can have a board with multiple layers of dielectric, and each dielectric can have a different thickness. But Why sometimes case, we can... you use semicolon and sometimes not? It's very simple. If uh, I don't use semicolon, when I execute a, a line, the output of the line comes in the command window. Ah, OK. <laughs> if I put semicolon, you don't see the end of it. So okay. straightforward there. Uh, what else can we do? 
Uh, the other thing that we can do oh, is... Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry, again, yeah. for interrupting. Yeah. How did you specify where the second layer is, D1? That's... I put, uh, I said, so we know that the layer one is our metal uh, inverted F antenna. Now we put D1 in place of layer two. So if I now look at PCB ant, you will see that now it has two layers. Mm -hmm. The top layer is a metal polygon, mm -hmm. where we, our shape, and the second layer is the dielectric. Mm -hmm. So now we have a, a PCB stack with two layers. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, I what I want to do now is um, to trim a little bit of PCB board so that the borders coincide with our ground plane. Mm -hmm. So, and this is, a, a, I like it because it also gives you an idea on how you can start uh, modifying the, um, the structure, start adding uh, uh, different type of uh, uh, geometric shapes, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, so how I'm gonna do it? I want to modify what? I wanna modify the board shape. And so I'm gonna say PCB ant uh, dot board shape. Is going to be a rectangle. So I'm going to say it is a rectangle. And uh, the rectangle length is um, uh, the rectangle length is equal to our antenna object dot uh, ground plane length. Why did you use antenna dot rectangle? It, because um, it's a way to define the, the geometries. So in um, the antenna toolbox provides okay. geometry. So you have that to you use the use. okay. You have to use the antenna toolbox to generate it. Okay, I understand. Right, because then you can apply Boolean operations. So if you want to sum two rectangles, um, essentially it it does the in, um, uh, the logical sum of the two. If you want to do the intersection. Uh, because these are shapes that come from the antenna package, it recognizes that there are a set of operators that can be applied to that. Um, what else do we do? Uh, we want the board shape uh, width to be the antenna object dot uh, ground plane, uh, not length, but width. But we also want to add the height of the antenna. So I'm gonna say antenna object dot height Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it two times because I want a little bit of space mm -hmm. on um, um, two times the antenna height. This is cool because uh, basically you really will be always simulating the real PCB because if you don't combine these parameters together, then if you change the PCB size, then you would not be changing the antenna right. ground plane, but we have right. to do it because then you... So Exactly, exactly. Wrong. You can always keep it synchronized. Mm -hmm. You can always keep it synchronized your, uh, your PCB to your antenna shape. Now, what's the problem? Now I need to offset a little mm -hmm. bit my ground plane. So I'm going to add one more parameter that is the center. And uh, I don't, I'm not going to apply any offset on the X direction. Mm -hmm. I want it centered, but I'm going to apply one offset on the, um, on the Y direction. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move it up by height. And you see how I, I keep on essentially modifying my PCB, looking at it, changing it, playing around. And this is very interactive. But the good news is that after I have a script and if I want to change it, everything is parameterized. You make it look so simple, <laughs> but how do you know it, you know all these parameters which you can put inside of the rectangle is like because uh, we looked at it before so this is our uh, ground plane width our ground plane length and our height of our okay, antenna. okay so we are using the parameters from the antenna design exactly exactly so when you look at the geometry when you look a little bit of the sensitivity analysis you get acquainted with what are the, the geometric shapes that matter and you, we, you now use the geometric properties of the antenna to define what is mm -hmm. our PCB. Okay. Still, we have all the copper we have on one layer. We need to separate. Right. So let's let's do let's put a, let's let's do the top layer to be copper. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, so I don't remember anymore how to do it. So I do PCB and. 
So PCB1 says that there is a conductor, a PCB and dot conductor is PEC. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna define um, C1, let's call it. Let me do it, actually, let me do it here from the command line. C1 is equal to uh, con duck tor. Does it work? Doesn't work. Okay, let's look at the help. What does it say? So I go back to MATLAB. I go back to, uh, uh, let me just go here, signal processing. And I want to find my antenna toolbox. Okay, not signal processing, but under RFMX signal, of course. Look under antenna mix signal, uh, uh, RFMX signal. I look at antenna toolbox, material catalog. Okay. Metal catalog. Oh, this looks about right. So it's not conductor, it's metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to say C1 is metal material. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it wasn't conductor. This was a bit, so it was metal. Uh, metal. And I want to have copper. Let's give it a try if it works. Yes, it works. So, we so have you have copper thickness. specified in the materials. Correct. Correct. It's one of the material catalog. And now I want to change a C1 dot thickness mm -hmm. because we want to use the same number that we saw in the reference design. Yeah. It was, I think, 35 uh, micro micrometers. We, uh, we had it. Yeah. What is it? Uh, 35 thickness, micrometers. Yeah. There you go. So we put it here on the side, the thickness is a 35E minus 6. I update it, that's the right value. Now I need to do something else. I need to make sure that this is part of my script. So I go back here, I go back there, C1 metal copper, and uh, C1 thickness is, uh, and uh, let's do it again. Oh, I made a mistake. I should define first the copper and then the thickness. And then I need to assign it. So I'm going to say PCB ant dot conductor is equal to C1. Mm -hmm. Because I created C1, but I didn't assign it. OK, now I rerun it. And what do I see? I see it's mm -hmm. slightly darker. You see also here mm -hmm. in the legend that it says that it's copper. So looks about right. Mm -hmm. There is nothing on the bottom. This is our PCB. Good. Shall we analyze it now? Uh, but in a real PCB, the ground would be on a little bit deeper, no? And uh, right. the chip would be on the top and the right. antenna feed would be on Correct. the top. Correct. Correct. But before we do that, I would say let's analyze it because the dielectric will change the properties okay. of our antenna. It will shorten the wavelength but okay. we don't know how much is going to shorten the wavelength so let's look if the resonance move because of the dielectric okay um so let's do this i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna go back actually i'm simply gonna copy this one as it is i'm just interested in looking at the impedance um, i'm gonna keep it like this i'm moving it down there putting it here and i know that the res I know that essentially the wavelength will become uh, shorter. Uh, wavelength will become. I, I know that the frequency will go down essentially. Mm -hmm. The resonance frequency will go down. So let me plot it essentially up to, I don't know, 2.4 gigahertz, something like that, and see where we go. So now we get the S parameters. Oh, let me just 2.5, something like this. And we need to analyze now our PCB ant not our antenna object, mm -hmm. but our PCB antenna over this. Okay, let me just run this analysis and see where we are going. 4.5. Okay. So I get the figure here. The analysis takes a little bit longer now because we have a, a, a thicker dielectric. We still have 21 points, so we need to remember maybe next time to reduce the number of mm -hmm. points. So we speed up okay, the analysis okay. and we make it a little bit faster. But let's see where is our, where is our impedance gone. There we go. 
Ooh, it's gone very yeah. low. <laughs> way away. <laughs> way, very low. I mean, let's let's go. We start from 1.6 maybe, and we can go to definitely 2.3, something like that. We do 11 points. Let's reanalyze it, and let's see where we are going. So now we have 11 points for the analysis. Where is it? There we go. Woohoo. So we have now resonant exactly at 2 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So we were resonant at 2.4. Now we are resonant at 2. So now we can scale all the geometry of our antenna by the ratio of these two numbers. So let's do that, I would say. What do you think? I don't know how you are going to tweak it back to 2.4. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with our antenna object that we started with. And I'm going to say antenna object dot. And then I'm going to go through all the properties of this antenna object. So what do I have? I have the radiator arm width. I'm going to say that this, we want to scale it. Sorry. I'm going to scale it by how much? Uh, I'm going to do the ratio between 2 divided by 2.4. This is what I'm going to scale it for. Okay. It and would I'm... not this be better use the optimize feature? You can. You can, definitely, but in the end, I'm not sure that it takes more time or less time okay. in the sense that the optimization is something that will explore all possibilities. Well, in this case, what I'm simply doing it here is divide, do this and divide by scale. Mm -hmm. But you have also it specified down there in the next line, how you are going to delete it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to show what I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, to save you a little bit of time, I can just uh, go and copy what I've already done. So you can see it here. Okay, I see. Scale 2.4, okay. And I scale them all like this. This is just to save a little bit of editing. Okay, perfect. So you figure out how to actually adjust the uh, geometry of the antenna to move the resonance frequency back exactly. to 2.4. Essentially, I'm shrinking the antennas by this amount and if i say what how much is this i mean 20 percent mm -hmm. so case, you made everything smaller by 20 percent mm -hmm. okay and then uh, the next part is just copy again what we have done and just repeat it okay so i'm just after i, I scale it and so i'm gonna Let's design our antenna just to make sure that we start with, do, do, we don't rescale it two million times. So now we scale, uh, we design our antenna, we scale it down by our scaling factor. We put it on a PCB stack. We look at it and let me see if we have an older figure here. Ooh, la la. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna put it XY. And then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to put it X, Y. Let's see if we were successful. So you are running both and we are going to compare them. Right. So this one was the older one and this is the newer one. So you see that it's a little bit smaller. 20%. Mm. How do you see it? Just look at the. So this one is uh, uh, this one is the old one that is you see here is 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. I see, this I see, three, I see, I see now. 30 millimeters. Mm -hmm. This one is 35, this is 30. So mm -hmm. we went, we lost a centimeter essentially by just putting it on the substrate. Okay, let me put back where it was and let me put it down there. Good. Now we have shrunk the antenna and now we can reanalyze it. Let's see how we are doing. The only thing is that now we are back to the frequency range that is around 2.4 gigahertz, hopefully. So let me put it 2.5 and 2.3, something like that. 
and let's see how we are doing. It's kind of exciting because every time you want to check, I mean, am I doing the right things? Every step, every step. You check it, you modify it, you check it, you modify it. Actually, I would say you modify it, you check it. Where are we resident? 2.36 gigahertz, which is actually not too bad for just a first pass rule of thumb. Now we could apply an optimizer. And by the way, look also how good the, the, the impedance is. Mm -hmm. Very, very close to, to 50 ohm. Mm -hmm. This is actually from um, our uh, application node from TI, not our, but from our application node from TI. And uh, here, essentially, this is an inverted F. This is exactly uh, the same structure that we have worked with, you see, with the via to the ground and the feed point. However, the radiator arm is not straight, but it is meandered. I'm not going to do it programmatically yeah, okay. because otherwise I literally, you were worried. Eh? <laughs> so <laughs> I can see that you were worried. So I'm going to do it uh, with another app. Um, so you might have noticed here, we have a PCB antenna oh, design. Oh, you app. can draw it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, was worried. I was worried that if if you don't have anything to draw the... right, right 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 i was gonna make you sweat no no you can um, you can draw it and um, it's better than that we can draw it using all the parameters that the ti application node gives us so that we can draw it and at the same time um uh, draw it in a parameterized way so what can we do uh, let me just uh, do something um, for my convenience. Do I'm you have something uh, so simple also for the stack up or stack up has to be done programmatically? <laughs> uh, stack up can be done here in the app. Okay. <laughs> Good. So what do we see here? You have the first thing you have, um, uh, actually now you have an empty session. Here you define your stack up, so you define your board shape and then you will add layers. You can add uh, metal and dielectric layers. Um, you can um, uh, define the material properties for the metal conductor and dielectrics. And you can add variables. And actually what I would recommend in this case is to start with the variables. Okay. So here the application node from ti gives us this table here with l1 l2 l3 and all their meanings uh, there is one thing that i when i looked at it i didn't quite like is that actually l3 can be expressed as um, the sum of w1 d5 w2 mm -hmm. d6 and again mm -hmm. w2 um, so what i uh, what I can do is simply to type in all these values and then use, uh, uh, except for L3, that okay. is a dependent variable. Okay. Um, so I can at least start with that. I'm going to put it on my other screen because it's, it makes it a little bit easier for me to type in. But here I can say I want to add a design variable. It's going to be L1. And actually here, you see that the Kanban settings are by default in millimeters. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to say L1 value is uh, uh, 3.94, uh, mm -hmm. for example. And then I'm going to add a second variable that is going to be L2, 2.7, and, and so forth. Um, I have uh, done all this work already. So if you don't mind, I'm going to load auto. I I'm just going to load the state in which I just have the variables prepared just to save the time of the editing. Um, um, so let's look at it. So I still haven't done anything here. There is nothing on my canvas. Okay. Uh, but um, let me just collapse this one. And you will see here, these are my, uh, these are my variables, L1, L2, L4. You these have L5, L2, oh, oh, L3. Okay, L3, you don't have L3. L okay, L3, there you go. This is uh, the, the okay. cool part. So L3, let me just put back the PowerPoint. L3 is equal to, uh, you see it here, W1, W2, yeah. And you see the value here that is five millimeters. That is the same value that comes up here. Mm -hmm. So uh, being good, and then we have um, 
uh, four other variables. I have LBS and WBS, oh, let's start with this. WGP and LGP are uh, the ground plane uh, dimensions mm -hmm. from the PCB. And actually WGP is uh, uh, three centimeters on the length side. Uh, and LGP is the sum of um, uh, uh, D1, um, L3. Yeah, I see, I see. Two times yeah. L5. Uh, two times L2 and D3. Yeah. So this is the width of my PCB. So here I created my variables. Then what do I want to do? I'm going to add the board shape. So now let me uh, uh, maximize this one. Um, oh. And make it a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to draw a rectangle and this is going to be my board shape. Expand. So and call it board shape and um, uh, what my board shape is gonna be is gonna be length we have these two variables here lbs length board shape wbn width of the board shape there we go let's uh, let's fit to view so this is going to be, mm -hmm. and then we are going to center it. Um, so the way we want to center it, that um, essentially uh, we want to put the center uh, in the middle with the x direction. So it's LB, LBS divided by two. That makes sense. Draw it, but you can also parameterize everything. And from the y direction, I'm going to say WBS uh, divided by two, WBS, this is center, the vertical center, but I want to offset it by the ground plane, mm -hmm. WGP, WGP, is it right? Okay. Why is that? Because if I look at my diagram, I want this point here, essentially, uh, actually here, uh, this point here is going to be my uh, coordinate zero zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's essentially here, and then that, that will help me position. Yeah, because the... everything is uh, mm, all the dimensions are referenced to that point. Exactly. So that's that's a that's a convenient way of looking at it. Okay. So now I have my board shape. Uh, now we're gonna add. Um, here we can already start defining my layers. It's gonna be copper with thickness. Uh, the 35E minus 3, because it was 35 micron, the units are millimeters, so, so there you go. And then I'm going to add uh, a layer, I'm going to add a metal layer. That's good, and I'm going to, I want the metal layer to be bright and yellow, so that it reminds us of metal. It can be any color. Oops. Uh, where did we go? Here we go. Good. Now we have a metal layer. What do we do on the metal layer? Um, once we are on the metal layer, we start drawing shapes. And I'm going to draw, let me make an example. I'm going to draw a couple of shapes here. Um, yeah. I'm going to draw a rectangle like this. And then I go another rectangle like that. Mm hmm. And then I grow another rectangle like this. Okay, and so this is how you build the antenna. You just add the dimensions of these will be the parameters what we created. Exactly. Exactly. So rectangle, this was going to be my re first rectangle. Uh, let's look at this. So the first rectangle is going to be number one here. It has W1 and L6 in terms of width, uh, length and width. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that the length is going to be W1 and the width is going to be L6. L6. Okay. Uh, I was a little bit generous with the dimension when I draw it by hand. And then we have to put it um, where? Uh, so we want to put it with respect uh, to our offset. Um, with the center, let me do it like this. It's always W1 half, uh, the half of W1, that is the width, to check the center, W1 divided by two. 
uh, and then we want to have it plus d1 to have it okay the center of this rectangle here on the x on the x axis plus d1 and on the y axis i'm going to have um, l6 divided by 2 that is the center of our rectangle but we want to remove this um, uh, little bit that d4. is below the minus okay. d4 uh, is it right so let's look at it okay mm -hmm. this is our first rectangle i guess you could still draw it directly on the canvas but that would not be like uh... you can draw it by hand if you are a confident drawer let's put it like that but the point is that we want to have it parametrized in geometry why because if we want to scale it down i just go and change w1 mm -hmm. or w2 and then all the geometry will be automatically mm -hmm. opening up and closing down mm -hmm. depending on my design um i fast forward again if you don't mind yeah, or i can, can do a couple can... more rectangles but i mean i already prepared a session where i just drew all the uh, i think that there are 12 or 13 rectangles so here I just jump forward and uh, we get uh, just all the rectangles nicely uh, nicely put together in good order and now we will see it in a second there you go so you mm -hmm. see that I did uh, uh, this was um, uh, this was my work today so what do we see here we have all the rectangles so you say rectangle one rectangle two uh, rectangle three and uh, you see the rectangle one is the, exactly what we did right now if i go back here we recognize the, the 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 position the coordinates that's all good now um, we do something really cool so i just um we need to connect them somehow I we guess. need to connect them exactly so i'm gonna collapse this one i'm gonna pull down here i'm gonna to select all my rectangles and i'm gonna say just up mm -hmm. So now I'm going to get a polygon uh, that is going to be um, oh, sorry, I didn't select it. Let's go to add. Uh, so we're going to get a polygon that has all the vertices of our uh, rectangles. And uh, this is going to be our shape on the mm -hmm. top layer. And now let's, let's, let's see if I, what, if I did a good job. Let's say that I change W2. Let's remember that it was 0 0.5 mm -hmm. and I change it to 1. Uh, then automatically uh, everything gets uh, will get fatter. Perfect. Um, 0.5 or I go back to the, to, the, to the right number because, you know, I, I did it a bunch of times and then I, I got all sorts of results between here and the sun. Or W1, we can do 1.5 or something like that. And, and you can see that how things are changing automatically, also the board shape, everything is nicely parametrized. You spend a little bit of time with the parameterization, but once you do this, you can optimize your environment. Mm -hmm. Because all of these are variables for optimization. You know, you know, uh, when I was starting with 3D software, like mechanical software, mm -hmm. I uh, didn't parameterize anything. And then uh, when I wanted to change something, I spent so much time like redoing stuff that I learned that always when mm -hmm. I'm drawing something, just use parameters because it will save you a lot of time in future. Right, right. Now that's, I think that uh, we're all been there, Robert, <laughs> <laughs> all of us, <laughs> we all started that way. And then, it, and I still nowadays I start, oh, but I just do five seconds and I do it on the fly and I will never do it again. And you know when you start that this isn't going to work. <laughs> it's, exactly. um, it's, that's it. Um, so um, I don't remember anymore what W1 0.5. was. Oh, no, uh, no, 0 .9, no. 0.9, I, okay. I think it was 0.9. <laughs> I mean, you see there, I mean, um, what is it? What was it? Sorry. Uh, W1, 0 0.9. Okay. Yes, I remember correctly. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, let me go back to the app. Okay. Uh, what's next? So now we have um, only one layer. Mm -hmm. that is our top metal layer um, now we start adding a dielectric layer mm -hmm. for example i have a dielectric layer one and i move it down um, and 
I have both properties, so let's expand it. Let's move it a little bit down. Is it dielectric? We want to have FR4. But our epsilon R was 4.5, so we changed it to 4.5. Okay. Uh, and our thickness was, um, if I remember correctly, uh, 0 0.25 millimeters, I think. And um, we change the color because we uh, we make it green. Green, yeah. That it looks a little bit better. Okay. Oh, sorry. And and now you see here. So this is my dielectric layer that really doesn't look particularly exciting because there is nothing on it. Um, but um, if I look at my three D view of my antenna, this is um, uh, this it's is the whole nice. PCB. Right. So let me just try to. Try to rotate it. There you go. So you mm -hmm. see, I have my metal layer in yellow, and my dielectric layer okay. here. In uh, I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna add another metal layer. And let's move, move it down. down. Okay. And then I'm gonna add another dielectric layer. Mm -hmm. You can also copy and paste the layers if you want to. If you have structures that are very similar. Um, that's also possible. So let's start with the dielectric layer. That is the easier one. I'm going to make it again green because it makes it a little bit easier to follow a darker green. And um, we're going to do it FR4, um, 4.5, and the thickness was 0 0.75. Uh, uh, so it's one millimeter in total. So the total thickness is one millimeter, right. And then we have this metal layer where we need to add our ground plane. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's uh, let's do our ground plane. So I'm going to, again, put a rectangle. So I can do it by hand if I feel, uh, if I feel good about it. And then I can also stretch it up here. I can also rotate, you can also rotate shapes. You can also, as you can see, you also have other shapes. In this case, everything is regular, is a rectangular, so it's fine. Uh, but let's call it G and D. And um, I have um, here a couple of variables that are helping me with the ground plane. So I have the W, um, the L, the length of the ground plane. And then I have the width, the width, Sorry, the width of the ground plane. That's good. And then the offset is going to be half of it, essentially. So it's going to be the length of the ground plane divided by two. So hopefully it will be nice and centered in the middle of our board. And this one is going to be uh, uh, ground plane width divided by two. But as we subtracted, if you remember from the board shape, the ground plane, we just put a minus in front of it. And there we go. So now we have um, our PCB board. And um, just the via and the and the feed point yeah. are missing. Exactly. So at least now we have defined our stack up. So we're good with the stack up. So we can just um, uh, collapse the layers. Essentially, that's the, the, those are essentially are done. Let's uh, put um, the other uh, feed. Let's add a feed point. It, it just puts it somewhere there. Mm -hmm. Where do we want the feed point? Let's let's look back to our PowerPoint. Uh, the feed point was here. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's probably a little bit on the small Yeah, it is. Side. I see. Yeah, it says. Yeah. So the feed point is uh, uh, D1 plus W1 plus D5 plus uh, W2 half. Mm -hmm. and that's the X direction. And the Y direction is half D4, D4. Half four. Four. Exactly. Minus. Uh, minus. Very good. So let's do that. So let me do that. So let's see if we remember what we said. I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking on my other screen okay. where I have the, <laughs> the where I have the the, the 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 PowerPoint essentially. So what do I have here on the PowerPoint? We have um, a D1, 
D1, and then we have plus W1 plus D5, D5 plus W2 divided by 2, and the x direction was minus D4 half. Is it right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not bad, not bad. There is also something else here. There is that um, we want to from metal layer, from the top metal layer. Oh, I still have metal layer two here. I don't like metal layer two. I like ground, so that I remember what we are talking about. So feed one is now between uh, top metal layer and ground. It's called feed one. Uh, feed voltage is one but I want to have a, a square and I want um, a, a, a diameter that is maybe W2, mm -hmm. maybe divided by two. So it's, ha it's half of the... So that is the diameter becomes half of the width mm -hmm. of our strip. Okay. Uh, and now we see it that here it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. Yeah. I can see. So, yeah, it's, it's right there, it's right there. So our feed point is Perfect. about right. Now we also add a VM. So let's add a VM. Same story as before. Um, between top layer and the ground layer. That's good. And uh, where is the location of our feed of our, uh, um, of our VIA is D1 plus W1 divided by 2, mm -hmm. and minus D4 mm -hmm. half divided by 2. Okay, that's easy to remember. So it's um, D1 plus W1 divided by 2, and this one is minus D4 divided by 2. Is it right? Looks about right. Um, let's look this one, and we do the width to be W1 may be divided by 4 because W1 is a little bit thicker than uh, W2. Okay. If we look at it, so I made it a little bit smaller so that they are more or less the same dimension. Good. I think that, uh, are we forgetting something? Let's check it. We can validate our design. Okay. Uh, everything passed. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's good. It did a good job. So now, what can we do now? And now we, we have can go to, to export the... it, I guess. Well, we can analyze it. Oh, first. you can analyze it directly here. Yeah. I didn't know that. So you can set. Uh, okay, I want to analyze it around 2.4 gigahertz, but I want to. I'm gonna do lin space. Uh, what was it? Uh, 2.2 and uh, 2.6 gigahertz, 11 points, something like that. Let's say that this is our uh, frequency range. As soon as I give, provide the frequency range, I can look at the impedance. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it's going. So it takes a, a little bit more time than before. Every time we are making things a little bit more complicated. Uh, it takes a minute or so. Uh, it's not too bad. And then we see if we did a good job or if we messed up something. Hopefully, it's yes, good. It's a, it's always good to do something, verify, do something, verify, and check it out. But you see how we really uh, we built a bit of confidence in our design, starting from zero. Where are we? We are resonant at uh, two point fifty five gigahertz. There are two resonances here. Actually, there is a parallel resonance, and but this one has an impedance that is really high. Mm -hmm. So now we don't want to use this resonance frequency here because it will make it very, very hard to match. But this resonance here is fantastic because essentially 50 we have ohms. an yeah, I see. almost 50 <laughs> ohm. So it's really good. Uh, the other thing that we can do is um, let's um, uh, check. Um, we can look at the impedance. We can also look at the uh, S parameters, but we can also play around with the mesh. And the mesh is a very important uh, parameter because like we were saying before the mesh is what determines the quality of the results so right now you see here i have the the mesh that is automatically managed so i have a minimum edge length that is around five millimeters the maximum edge length is 36 millimeters 
I can also go to a manual um, mesh. So for example, I can reduce it a little bit to half of it. And this will give me an idea if, um, uh, if my results are accurate or not. So you can make the mesh uh, finer and finer. This will take longer in the analysis results, but at a certain point in time, you can, uh, it doesn't make a difference anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point where to be, where you want to be, essentially, where the mesh doesn't influence the results anymore. Now I knew, because I did it before, that the mesh was a bit coarse, uh, and we are off because of that. Ah, okay. But a little bit. Uh, it's actually not, we will see that there is a little bit of difference, but it's not a massive difference. Uh, so I refined a little bit the mesh, and with the refined results of the mesh, we actually reproduce exactly the same simulation results that the it's TI exactly, application okay. node exactly gave us. Because so uh, for this current measure, for the previous measurement, the mesh was maybe too big, so you yeah. didn't get like exact... Uh... Exactly, exactly, especially on the... On the um, on the borders, essentially, because there are, you can see here that essentially because of the meander, you have a lot of details that mm -hmm. need to be captured by the mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, before we had a, a, a much more linear design that mm -hmm. was easier to analyze. Uh, there is less coupling in between the antenna elements. Um, so now with the with the more complex design, we re refine a little bit the mesh. So you Ooh. see that we are, it, it moved a little bit, but it's not a, a is, is not a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not that we were massively lost. Huh? The resonance is still there. We can look at the S parameters and we will see there is a nice notch. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that is pretty much the same notch that we find in our application node. And it's like 2.52. Um, I think that we go here. What we are comparing against is uh, in free space, that is around 2.5, essentially. I think that this is what we are looking at, 2.5. Uh, and we are actually here, around 2.5. I mean, I don't have a lot of points, but essentially... Yeah, it can, it can even go there, because exactly. there is one point is 45 it's, it's, something, yeah. Exactly. So we are, we are really a little bit farther away. We can refine a little bit um, the S parameters, but that's, that's the idea. Now we export. Export as a MATLAB script. Uh, so there, I mean, this is it. So you see all the variables get automatically generated, all the dependency, the PCB stack, and then all the geometric uh, properties. Let me make it a little bit bigger of the rectangles so with our name and then they get summed up together and then um, they get you, you recognize all the syntax mm -hmm. because it's exactly what we've done before mm -hmm. so we have the dielectric layer one dielectric layer two uh, the ground metal layer uh, the feed location the via location um... oh we didn't change the we did change it and so we did change it. Let me check it. Maybe we forgot that one. Oh, you see? We don't have the losses of the Okay. Of the copper. Probably because I changed it, but then I reloaded the thirty-five E minus three. And ground. No, this is a, there is only one metal property okay, okay. for everything. Okay. So we can re-update the plot and then we recompute it. So as you see how the script helps you to double check things as well, uh, to find if there is something uh, not right. And then essentially we create our uh, PCB stack, putting everything together and then we are good. Mm -hmm. for Actually, the script is not as complicated as yeah. I would uh, think. It's readable. Yeah. It's readable. It's readable and it's uh, human readable, I would say. Because, um, uh, frankly said, we could also generate just an object that encapsulates all the properties. But then it makes it a lot harder to modify it mm -hmm. because then you always have indexed the field properties of the object. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, because we are constructing the object uh, with all its properties, 
it is easier to rebuild it differently. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's uh, that's the thing. And um, so here we have um, six over eleven simulation points. We are keep on running simulations. Seven over eleven. I'm curious that's what good. will change. <laughs> now it will Let's be see. perfect. Well, we should be should have a, some a little bit more losses. It's very very thin the metal, so we should have a little bit of more losses. So a little bit lower frequency. Maybe. Let's see. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No. It's higher frequency, or no? Oh, it's same. No, pretty much nothing. Mm, I just think that pretty much nothing changed, or not a lot. Good. Okay. Good to good to check it, at least. Okay. Uh, so export. Export. Okay, Gerbers. We can generate Gerber files. There are a couple of things that can be interesting here. Uh, I can generate a Gerber file for my aunt. I call it like that. I can use a default connector, or I can use another connector. There are a family of connectors that mm -hmm. are predefined. Again, we have a catalog of connectors, but if you want to define your own connector, that's also possible. So this is basically to test this PCB, correct? To fabricate it. Mm -hmm. Once you get the the once you get the Gerber files, you can fabricate it, and uh, and once you get it home, you can measure. You can it. measure it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a feature that we really used um, uh, pretty much initially to test our to own designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to verify that the solver was doing the right things. And then you can choose different uh, uh, PCB services. Um, one that I like is the Mayu writer, for example. Uh, and then I can well, just What say, does it okay. mean, PCB service? The PCB service is essentially is, um, uh, the type of viewer that you can use to visualize the Gerber files, mm -hmm. essentially. Okay. That, um, uh, so as soon as I say, okay, let me just move this one here on the side. If it allows me, it's working in the background. So it's like a software, correct? Yeah, exactly. So here I have my Gerber files. I don't see them yet. Here on the left. Ah, okay. Side. Ah, okay. You have not opened them yet. So these are my Gerber files, mm -hmm. and then um, if um, if I find my web browser, in my web browser here, uh, this is uh, the Mayu Labs mm -hmm. Gerber services. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these. Uh, let me just do it like this. Just do it like this, and then drag and drop them. Done. And this is our PCB. I can just show the outline because we are not interested in the silk screen. Is there and also there the we... connector, or you didn't add any connector? I believe that the connector is at the back. Oh, it's a little okay. bit big, but it's already there. So it's um, that's our that's our PCB. I was expecting the connector to be where the feet is. On the is. top. Yeah. It's, it got stuck on the back. <laughs> if it would be on the front, it would be really big on top of it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that actually we have the possibility to control the position of the connector. Mm -hmm. In this uh, case, probably you would need to use something else anyway, because that would influence yeah. the antenna. Yeah, it's so big also yeah. compared to the to the size of the antenna, that's yeah. probably not the best option. Yeah, you just selected randomly something. Exactly. Okay. That's a... Can you export uh, this uh, to, I don't know, like uh, DXF or something generic what you can import to other uh, um, PCB so, softwares? Um, the, the, um, DXF. I have to come back to you to that with that question, with that answer, simply because I know that it's something that definitely the XF input and export is something we are working on. I'm not sure if it is out in release 22B. Okay. Uh, but I know, for example, that we can import STL files. We can import and export STL file. I don't think the step is supported yet. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, right now we are supporting Gerber and STL. Step uh, I, in the XF, I think uh, is work in progress. If I if I'm saying the right things. Okay. Because I think DXF would be something what more people could import mm. into the PCBs. Right, 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 right. And by the way, we also do allow the import of Gerbers, so which is also quite cool because if you want, if you have a design, you want to modify it, you import the Gerber, you you get the boundaries of your geometric shapes, and then you operate on that one. Mm-hmm. And we actually also have an example where the antenna is taken from a photo. So we extract the boundaries of the antenna just from a photograph and the uh, image recognition, which is also quite, uh, I, I, okay, I'm a nerd. I like it. What can I say? Okay. There is one more feature what I would like to see, the optimization. The optimization. Yes. So uh, you've seen it in the antenna designer app, in the array designer app, and now also in the PCB designer app, we have the optimize feature. Um, this is a really uh, this is a very cool feature because um, it um, it uses um, uh, not any optimizer, but it actually uses an optimizer. Uh, well, do you have options um, out of the box between two different optimizers that are both um, surrogate optimization methods? Good. So what do we have here? Now the optimization pane is open. You have uh, two optimizers, like I was saying, the SADIA and the surrogate optimization method. They are both surrogate optimization methods. SADIA is uh, meant for antenna design, uh, and it was uh, developed uh, by a professor at the University of Glasgow, Professor Beaulieu. It's a very sophisticated algorithm, very fast, uh, I would say, the state of the art for antenna optimization. So what does it mean? Well, it's going to be fast so you don't kind of simulate every um, correct possibility takes... but you somehow iterate to the correct solution or something like that it's um i have a slide actually that might be but uh, no you don't need to you don't i, I just okay. wanted to know because normally what would i expect is like okay you change something you simulate it again you change something you smell but i guess that would take ages right. Now, what, what it does is that essentially you sample your design space with a number of uh, pseudo random values, mm-hmm. and then you build a sort of um, surrogate model, a behavioral model of, of your uh, analysis results. And then you perform the optimization using the surrogate model. Oh, so okay. every time that you do the calculation, you use the model. And once you get closer to your optimum, it verifies that the model is correct. Mm-hmm. So it performs again an electromagnetic simulation, checks if the model is right or wrong, and then uh, it might update it. So it's an iterative method, but the great benefit here is that it doesn't run an, an electromagnetic analysis every time that the new value is tried. Mm-hmm. So that's really the, the, the simple idea of surrogate optimization method. How the surrogate model gets constructed it's really complicated because you need to have a certain surface model, essentially, that um, that uh, that uh, that represents the behavior of your structure. Um, so that's really surrogate methods in general. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so here we have our variables. So you see here we have the variables that we defined before in our design. So for example, we could optimize for W2 and say I want it between 0.2 and... We would like to optimize it for frequency, 2.45, let's say. This is a... So we are now optimizing the geometry. Ah, Okay, Um, so here you set the limits for the optimization, what what it may change. Exactly. So these are the boundaries of your independent variables. So we change the geometry. Uh, This is just one example. I just put one, honestly, mm-hmm. just one random variables. And then what do we want to optimize? We can, for example, maximize the gain. This is our, our objective function. So we want to have a higher directivity, or maybe we want to maximize the bandwidth or minimize the area. Frequency, so, we would like to optimize the frequency, no? Uh, what is optimizing the frequency? Uh, well, like, I don't know, it should be 2.45, let's say. Um, we, okay, we can do that. Uh, we can minimize the bandwidth, uh, which means at 2.45 gigahertz. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and then it will become as narrow as possible at 2.45 okay. gigahertz. I'm curious what will happen. And then um, essentially it's um, um, and then essentially we can apply a constraint function because of course uh, when you do an optimization you can um, potentially you could get a, a very narrow bandwidth at 2.45 gigahertz uh, but you would could get a very bad gain for mm -hmm. example okay i understand so for example you could say i want a gain that i wanted larger than uh, 1.5 okay something like that so you can apply different constraints that's what i'm trying to say one of the typical things to do is maximize for gain and uh, uh, have a con uh, maximize the gain and uh, constrain the s11 to be below minus 10 db mm -hmm. for example so that's that's the type of things that we can uh, we can change. Um, the frequency range I wanted two point forty. Let's say let's just add three points. So we can do two point um, I don't know forty uh, forty five uh, two point five uh, two point fifty five. No, I think I would do two point forty then two point forty five. No. Uh, yeah, we can do that. And 50. Yeah, just to have three points, the fewer points you have, the, the better it is. Um, and then you have to choose what you want to optimize. So uh, I don't know now, what can move the length, some of these. Right. So if you remember when we started, we looked at the sensitivity of, um, of, the, of the antenna. So we played with um, uh, with the radiator arm length, for example, or the radiator arm width. So these are all properties that essentially, or knowledge that we got at the beginning when we studied the simple inverted coplanar F, to have an idea now what are the variables that are really relevant? Mm -hmm. What are the variables that really make a difference? Um, so one of the variables that I chose now was W2. W2 is the, is the width of the trace. So by making the, the width, uh, um, essentially uh, making the width uh, narrower, uh, with a thicker um, radiator arm, we were moving the frequency um, lower, and with a thinner radiator arm, we were moving the frequency okay. higher. Mm -hmm. So those are the type of things we can try. And um, yeah, now we can run the simulation. I, I just have one variable here. We can have multiple variables. Just this make an example. One will be faster, I guess. Yeah, but I'm also running 100 iterations, which means that it will take, in any case, a, a, a long time. So I don't think that we will be able to see the results, uh, but at least we can see the construction of the model. Um, so what's running now, essentially, I need to apply this one as well. Sorry, is that I'm getting a warning there. Okay, good. Now I applied everything, I think. So let me just, I need to apply this one. Okay, good. Everything is applied now I can run it. And uh, if you have um, a, a better computer than mine, you can also use parallel computing. So you can parallelize the simulation. And essentially what happens now is that uh, um, you will see now in a second that the, uh, the surrogate model gets built. That's the part that takes uh, the most time uh, because essentially you need to do uh, the electromagnetic analysis of your circuit on all these frequency points for uh, a, a, a range of value of, for, for a number of values for our variables. Now we chose only one. Uh, and then we can, uh, uh, the surrogate model will be used for the optimization and back and forth, we will have some electromagnetic analysis in between to validate the results. We didn't talk about how much it cost or, uh, you know, this kind of, because I know uh, people, they always ask like how much this is going to cost me or this is only for very uh, mm -hmm. rich companies. And <laughs> so I would like to maybe cover so, this, if you can talk about this. So the uh, MathWorks, uh, uh, that is the makers of Matrab is an, uh, a wonderful company and actually the price list is published. So if you go to the MathWorks website, you will just see uh, the price. Actually, if I go to the... Yeah, we can do it. You can stop this if it's going to take too much or if it's just going to slow down your computer or something. 
hopefully it will not do much. Uh, but um, if you go to Bartworks external and then I go to product and I browse down to my antenna toolbox, there you go, view pricing. There are different prices. So this is a commercial license. This is, a, I'm, I'm currently I'm, I'm in Europe. So that's why you see the price in euros. Uh, there are prices in dollars is equivalent. Essentially this is commercial, this is perpetual, which means you buy it now, you can use it forever. Uh, it's for you. So you would just go here, you would pay $1,680. Yeah. Click on buy now. Ah, there is required product MATLAB. Right. So does that's, it mean that's... you need to buy it separately? You need to have a MATLAB license, yes. And how much is MATLAB license? Um, let's look into that. Um, I honestly, I don't know it by heart. No. Okay. Plus this. And perpetual license, it means uh, there are no updates? Perpetual license means that you get uh, essentially two updates for the first year. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and after that, uh, you don't get updates. Okay. You so get perpetual uh, license. Usually it's same for all the kind of other software. So mm -hmm. you get one year subscription right, or support right. or something like that. Right, right, exactly the same. And then after that, you, uh, I think, is eighteen percent of the price, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. okay. for uh, for the maintenance. The majority of schools they have um, um, they have an agreement with MathWorks, and everybody it, it's head count, so it's campus wide, so all the students have all the products, and they don't have to pay. Period. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next time we will be talking about the other um, electronics yeah. uh, apps yeah, which you have in your signal software. integrity. I, yeah, yeah. Again, I had no idea you have signal integrity in MATLAB. That, that's new. <laughs> that's even newer than the antenna. And uh, that's everything. Thank you very much to Georgia for helping me to create this video, and thank you very much to you for watching. By the way, we are preparing some very interesting tutorials. So if you don't want to miss them, hit the subscribe button. If you want, you can also check out our Fedevel online courses, where you will find everything important from basic board design up to advanced hardware design and PCB layout. The link is in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you again. Don't forget to leave your comments and see you next time. Bye.